hour looking for him to come back here. Yeah, a week from tonight, I week believe. From tonight. That game was supposed to be at Lincoln, and they had to be switched. So this the last game was at Lincoln. He'll play here in the rematch, and I think it'll be a very good basketball game. But right now, they got to take care of business tonight. That really can't overlook this Mott team. What took somebody to overtime a couple of ball games ago? Yeah, they went four overtimes with East Detroit. But uh, this is a game that, you know, their season's down, but they would like to come in and win one at WW Tower, a crosstown rival. Yeah, that escaped me there, Joe. It was this mod team that went with East Detroit in four overtimes. Was that 119 or 109 to 99? 109 99. You and I were just on the phone, and I said, Bill, look at the score in the paper. Certainly did catch a, a lot of coverage in the, in the local papers, the news. Tom Markowski wrote about it one day last week. Chris Latham at the Free Press wrote about it in yesterday's Free Press in their local section. That's a game that comes around every five or ten years, Bill. I'll tell you. Looked it up right away in the state record book. From what I could tell, it's the fourth highest scoring game between two ball clubs. Here we go. Let's get ready for this game between these two ball clubs. Mott wins the tip. That's Mike Lubick with the ball. That's Josh Yasso looking for some help. And there's a Stolen. big steal. That's number 21, Derek Dicio. Take it right back. Lubick looking for some help down low. Travel. Yep, we're going to get a travel on number four. That's Zach Hillman. Boy, he had a good look at the three, passed it up, thought he'd drive inside for a step too quick. A lot of headbands on these uh, on these scalps tonight. Yes, there is. Think LeBron James has something to do with that, perhaps? That's very, very possibly. Either that or Bill Roos. I don't know. You don't see me wearing a headband. <laughs> Good ball movement so far by the Titans. A little shake and bake there by Moore. Give Mott some credit. They're not letting anything happen inside. Oh, solid man-to-man -man defense right now. There's a little give and go. Short. No, oh, I thought it was sure it was going to be short. That's Steve Grabowski, the 6-1 sophomore, and it's a 3 nothing Woods Tower advantage. I think they'd like me to say that more often and hit them all. Lubick with the ball and another steal. That's number 22, Satorski. The steal and the lay-in, and it's a 5 nothing advantage real quick. 6 and 30 left, first quarter. Timeout right now by Coach Bybrook, a 30-second timeout. Right now, he does not like what he's seen. The guy like what happened defensively, at least in the, in the short game. They've done a nice job man-to-man. -man. It's the steals on the offensive side of the floor for them. Looking at some statistics here for Woods Tower. One of the best, well, they're the best defensive ball club right now in terms of points per game allowed in the Max Silver. Just over 46 points a ball game. That's third overall in the entire 35 team map. That's not bad at all. It's a pretty good statement for this Titans team. Bob Jollett has always led with defense. He thought defense, you can do some things. And it does lead the championship. And, oh, there's a foul. Had a good steal, but then he got him with some body. A lot of body. Big collision, and we're going to get the foul on Tatorski, his first team first. Hillman to inbound for Mott. Gets it into Yasso. Yasso drives, pulls up in the key. That's Lubick with the ball. He gets it down low to 53. Feels wow, nice move. And Mott's now on the board. They trail 5-2. to two. And we're going to get a turnover. turnover here. Well, I'm impressed the way Mott has come out after the timeout by Spybrook. That's more field on Lubick. 
He crosses the timeline. Immediately looks down to the wing. That's Hillman getting harassed. Bielski up top, looks to Lubick. Boy, now they're throwing the ball around pretty well. Oh, I misspoke, and there's a steal. Stolen right back. Numbers. That's oh. Lubick with a nice pump move inside, and it's a 5-4 advantage for Woods Tower. I like what I'm seeing out of Lubick. He has come up with some steals. He's, he's got a nice move to the hoop. Right now, he's been big. Boy, if they get that kind of night out of him, big time. And T.J. Weber did not start tonight. Let's see how that plays out for this my team. Baseline drive and a miss, and that's number 30 with the rebound. Herzig, Steve Herzig. Mott goes on the attack. Herzig up top. Pump fake, pulls it back. Now drives. That's Hillman. Leading pass to Yasso. Yasso up top would reset the offense. Now he's directing some traffic down low. Lubick on the wing. Kobielski up top. Good defense by the Titans. Yep. And now we get a steal for 21. That's Dicio at the tip away. Kowalski over to number 22. That's a Torski. That's the big man. Yep. That's his second bucket, and Woods Tower is up 8-4. to four. He has five now. T.J. Weber getting ready to check in, Bill Roos. We're going to get a foul on number 13. That's Josh, or Justin Moorfield. That's his first, team second. Here comes Weber. He's checking in for Yasso. Right away they go to Weber. Probably a smart move. Nice spin move off the front of the iron. Might have forced it, Bill. Well, just into the ball game. Probably wants to get something done immediately. It, he did. He picked up the foul. You know what? When he got that ball, they quickly doubled down on him. And I think he's seeing more double teams as the season goes along. Because he gets you one-on-one. -on -one. He is really awesome. Toriano Madison, number 52, a 6'1 senior, checks in for Woods Tower, replacing Donnie Wood. That's Moorfield with the ball. Down low. Bielski oh. bats it away, and Weber's got the ball. Half hook. Yep, half hook is way short. Moorfield with the rebound. Moorfield with the ball again. Dicio drives, stops, gets it to Madison. Madison drives. Madison's tough. Nice jump, miss off the back of the iron. That Dicio, number 21, kicks it out to Moorfield. Lines up with three. Oh, another had his foot on the line. It's only a two. Oh, that was close. Woods Tower, though, increases their lead to six. They're up 10 to four. 317 remaining opening quarter. You're watching TV Warren's coverage. I'm Bill Roos, joined by Joe Cochran. We're going to get a foul here. It's going on Warren Woods Tower. That's the third WW Tower foul. Got a block on Steve Grabowski, his first, like Joe says, team third. Hillman's going to inbound for Mott. That's Weber with the ball getting harassed. Number 30, Herzog misses. That's Moorfield with the rebound. Boy, great transition. He likes busting it out, doesn't he? Oh, he does. They're really moving well with the ball. But here comes Mott right back at him. That was Brad Cochran with the defensive rebound and a push up the floor. There's Hillman with a long distance three and a miss. That's Herzog with the offensive board. And a big steal. Boy, both teams are great job of getting their hands in the passing lane so far. Tower wanting to run, but Mott getting back quickly on defense. Moorfield with the ball. To the nice, door. Nice. Nice bounce pass to Grabowski, who finishes strong, and it's a 12 4 advantage. And a oh. turnover. He stepped over the line, Bill. Boy, costly, unforced errors. They, get, they become so lethal, don't they, Joe? Oh, man. Especially when you're down like this, we get another timeout. Full timeout now by Mott. 
Well, they got to get something going. It's a 7-0 run now for W.W. Tower. I don't want to see the dancing. Phil, I know you're a big fan of TV Warren News. Love the news. 6, 9, 4, 7, and 10, 30. And now they, I think, have a midnight and 3 o'clock. They've added two more newscasts. Eight times a day. Phil Roos, you're going to get your fill on that. Hosted by Lori Earl and Fred Merle. The sports by Rick Chavsky. TV Warren News every day. As we look at Warren Woods Tower, you look at now Mott's call two timeouts. Bob Jowett's one of these guys. He'll save his timeouts toward the end. And I've seen it work for him where he'll be calling timeouts when you need to get the ball back. You're down a couple points. You hit a shot, call a timeout. So he's one to let his teams play through trouble. But he's taking advantage of that timeout, as you can see him in that huddle right now. He's taking a look at it there. He's, well, he's got him playing well this year. They're looking to go 9-3. and three. Now you see the big guy there, Nicky Bolin, the dark shirt, was third-team All-State here. He was our Warren Basketball Player of the Year. Six foot eighty. He went on to play at Western Michigan, and uh, before that, he was at Schoolcraft. And now here, also an assistant coach with the girls. Now here we go. That's Donnie Wood with the ball, number ten. A nice spin move, pass to Dicio. That's Litorski back to Dicio. Dicio drive, kicks it out to Litorski, off the iron. That's yeah. Hillman with the defensive board, and here we go with. Weber the other way. Going all the way. TJ's foul. Bob Jolla doesn't like the call. Oh. Referee Mike Gepsy with the call. Well, with Mott down eight and Tower on a 7-0 run, Warren Mott's got to score at any opportunity they can. Free throws are going to be big for them to stay in this basketball game tonight. Yeah, I'm trying to remember the last time I saw Mott. I think it was at Cousineau. Wasn't it wasn't Weber who went off that night? Yeah. that last year? Oh, last year? But it was at Cousineau. At Cousineau. They ended up losing an OT, though. But, yeah, he did him, and uh, Marcus Edens got real hot. Just a great game. They got him in the return match. I believe that was Chris Schunk and I that did that game, and uh, Mott got revenge on him. But Cousinos won seven of the last eight against Warren Mott. That's the big rivalry. There's Donnie Wood with Weber on him. Nice move to his left. Wow. Kicks it out to Grabowski. That drills a three-pointer. And all of a sudden, it's a double-digit lead for Woods Tower. They're up 15-5, under a minute and a half remaining opening quarter. Unbelievable. I'll tell you, top, oh, there's another steal. Zatorski gets fouled by Lubick, number three. After his first, I believe, second team foul for Mott. Future very bright here for WW Tower. They've got a lot of juniors on his team. Bob Jollett was talking about some sensational sophomores on the club, on, on the JV squad. It's going to be a very, very good ball club for the future. Of course, he hits his first. And they go up by 11. 123 left, opening quarter. Very impressive start by WW Tower. Zaporski makes his second. Now we're going to get some full court pressure here now defensively. Blue bit crosses the timeline. Hillman hit the Weber on the wing. Fires and misses. Herzog. Need to kick it back out. Court. Yep. There's Weber looking for foot placement behind the three. Doesn't get a shot off. Lubick does. A miss and that's Madison with the defensive board for Woods Tower. He walked. Yep. Yeah. Good call. That's a great call. Yeah, they were looking for the foul, but he took one too many steps. But at this point, Joe, it's one possession at a time right now for Mott. Under a minute to go. Let's start chipping away here at this double-digit deficit. They need something to end this quarter. Stuart Mayer getting ready to check back in for WW Tower. There's Weber. He gets his penetration stopped. He spins, nice. shoots, and hits it. Ten-point Woods Tower advantage, 17-7. 
Donnie Wood with the ball to the Madison. There's Dicey out. Bob Jala telling him to pull it back out. Yeah. They're in no hurry, just looking to line up a final shot. Victorski with the ball, Lubick on him. Boy, Mott needs to stop here, Bill. Strip. As luck would have it, Madison regains control. Wood oh, with a flip back. Beautiful play. Johnny, Johnny Wood. End of the first quarter, Joe. 19 to 7. Woods Tower in front. Boy, right now, if you're a Titans fan, you're loving this. Licking your chops and hopefully going to a 9 and 3 record at the end of this ballgame. But there's plenty of time left. Let's see if Steve Spybrook and his Mott Marauders can answer back with that first quarter performance. Too much speed right now. Warren Woods Tower running the floor. Mott needs to step it up on the defensive end. Phil Roosevelt at this time. I'd like to mention that we have our Hometown Window and Siding Hero that is sponsored by Hometown Window and Siding in St. Clair Shores. Dave Giapallo, give me $50 to the Athletic Department, and our Player of the Game will receive a basketball. Hometown Window and Siding, Player of the Game at the end of each basketball game. Not a bad idea, eh? No, not at all. Great gesture on their part. Nice looking Wilson basketball. Now all it needs is a Joe Cochran and Bill Roos autograph. No. There, there goes the value of that ball if you sign it. Yeah, but it goes in the hole if you sign it. <laughs> <laughs> Minus $5. I have to pay to get the ball. Well, Bill, I tell you what, if Warren Mond doesn't make a quick run here, we could be looking at blowout city. This is a big first couple minutes in the second quarter. They're down 12 already. You certainly don't want to go down to double digits in the first first quarter. So here we go. That's more field with the ball. And a steal right away by Lubin. Three on one. There's Herzig, number 30. And he travels. Boy, another on fourth there. You just can't have that. That's going to drive, drive Coach Spybrook crazy. Yeah, because that's an easy bucket right there. It's a wide open. Yep. No, you know what? I thought he had his foot on the line. They called a three. As Madison lines up a three, way off the mark. Nice, nice save. Awesome. Look at this. Two saves in a row. Travel. No, he stepped on the line. Yeah, Joe, how about the hustle by Andrew Kaczynski? And number 13, Justin Morfield. Great hustle defensively. Unbelievable. And then you get it from Warren Mott at the other end when you get Lubick going for the ball bounce. Foul there. That'll be the third Warren Mott foul. Now, are they going to get number 12 on that? Amir Ali. Well, if they could get some outside game from Ali, he hit about three big threes the other night against Kozno when they really needed some help. another on force there. He's got to be able to catch those passes, Mr. Madison. And they've got to, Warren Mont has to be able to take advantage of. There's a drive on the baseline by Mr. Weber. It's on the floor, though. Madison on the foul. His first team fifth. Jack Green checks in for Hillman on the Mont side. Jack Green will inbound this ball on the baseline. Does so to Lubin. Gets the ball back down low. Boy, they're really having a hard time getting anything down in the box. There it is. Oh, I thought he'd take the three. There's Weber penetration high off the glass. More field with the rebound. We're going the other way. There's a foul. No call. Got a lot of body on him. Kaczynski with the, the drive and the shot. They're right. in trouble with this pressure, Bill. Jack Green to inbound now for Mott. They trail 19 to 7, 635 left, opening half. You're watching TV Warren's coverage of boys high school basketball. We're at Woods Tower High School tonight. Lubick now with the drive. You mentioned Jack Green, number 11, the quarterback of the football team. Weber 
drives again. I thought he had a little for some help. That's Stuart Mayer, number 11 for Woods Tower. He's checked in, had the ball. Diceo up top, back to Mayer. A lot of movement. Great ball movement, actually, for Woods Tower. Moorfield looking for three, something down low. That's Kaczynski with the ball. Nice pick and roll. Diceo again. To Mayer. Mayer, nice. Wow. Nice jumper from the top of the key. Bob, I'm impressed with this WW Tower team. 21-7. Woods Tower in the lead. We're going to get a wholesale change here for Woods Tower, but not before we're going to get, oh, a shot by Kaczynski and a foul on Weber. 519 left, opening half. They call that a bullpen, Joe. Unbelievable. Basket goes to Kaczynski. Bill Roos, I'm really impressed with what Bob Jollett's done this year. This is his best ball club he's had since I've been doing this. Now, we get another full time. They've got three timeouts already here in the first half. Right now, they've got to be frustrated. Also, I need to tell everybody about TBA. That's hosted by Tracy Perry and Joe Colosi. Seen at 6.30 in the evening and 11 in the morning. They tell you what's going on in the area. TBA, Tracy Perry and Joe Colosi. As we look at Coach Spybrook, Phil, 16 points down early in the second quarter. What can you tell your ball club? Things are not going, and they cannot get any penetration. They cannot get inside. Now, it's probably the same same issues game in and game out. It's a team that's 2-9, and nine, and at, at one point, and, and, and this is the credit to Coach Spybrook. You mm -hmm. would think that at some point it's like beating a dead horse, but it's those positive coaching aspects that you get in guys like Steve Spybrook that keep him coming back. And he's, he's a teacher. He'll finally get that message across to these kids. I believe it's his fifth season here at Warren Mott. Had a good working relationship with Steve. And uh, hopefully he can get the ship righted and uh, get some things going. You can certainly see that intensity of him in that huddle from our broadcast position. Well, they, they beat Centerline. We did the opening game over there. They had a nice ball game. They got out to a big lead. Centerline made a charge, took the lead. Warren Mott pulled it back together. They were 2-2. Two and two. They've lost every game since, and of course the four overtime loss, and there's another turnover right, right out of a timeout. Hands in the passing lane again. Great activity on the defensive end for Woods Towers. That's Madison with Ali on him. Great move, drive the baseline. Pass inside to Donnie Wood. Ball off of a maroon jersey individual, and it's going to stay in Woods' possession. Woods Towers' possession, excuse me. Leonard Jones, 21, now in the ball game. For Warren Mott. They got to make a surge right here. Here comes Tillman. Short green, short. Oh. with the rebound and a put back. Right, right at the right place. Actually, he probably won't get a rebound for that. But how about that three-pointer? Wow. Looks like number four, Ryan McMillan. 26-9, Woods Tower total control right now. Four and a half remaining opening half. That's Hillman. Oh, oh boy, again. Donnie Wood with a block. Madison with a block. And we're going to get another steal. That's Joe Pish. Pesh. That's Pish. Yep. Pish. That's Donnie Wood with a turnaround. And a miss at Valley with a defensive rebound. I just know that because somebody told me it the other night. About Joe Pish. He'll give him some big minutes off the bench. Now you're going to get Middleton in the game for Mott. Madison just oh. allowed to drive the baseline. That's too easy. Yep. That's uh, certainly the problem that you run into right now. You're this club is better than this. Huh? Things are just not happening, and it looks like the wheels are ready to come off. Get Darian Winston in the game, number 43. Went to school with his dad. His father's here tonight with his mom. Matt Cruder also checks in for Woods Tower. 
Bob Jollett uses his bench so wisely. And there's no use in, or, or no point in not using it tonight. You're up 28 to 9. If Warren Mott was to make a surge, you you know, bring some more people back in. But looks like Mott's going deep to the bench here early as well. There's Jack Green lining up a long distance three, and he can't. Well, you talk about the medicine you need. That is huge for Warmont. They had to have that psychologically. Less than three and a half to go. And Mott is broken into the double digits. It's 28-12. Woods Tower in control. Dottie Woods passed wow. down low. We're going to get a foul on Chad Green. And this team makes contact with Darren Wenson. You know, Bill Roos, you and I met on the set of Sportsline that is still every Monday night at 7.30 live. Chris Schunk and myself, Joe Cochran. A lot of giveaways, and we keep you up to date with what's going on in the Warren area of the high school sports. Sportsline every Monday night at 7.30. How does that pass actually make it through that? Unreal, huh? Nice turnaround. That's Wentz 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 bucket, and it's 30 to 12. Woods Tower in control. That's his, uh, our GW next to us, that's his grandson. Our buddy, we see it all, a lot of the Catholic League games. He's in a lot of the games just in the county. Oh, absolutely. Oh, man. So sometimes it's like seven or eight tower players are out there. There's oh, see, and that really surprises me from a player of Middleton's caliber. Loses control. And he gets the foul. Again, I think, Joe, the wheels are seeping off the uh, no. the axles at this point. 30 to 12, Woods Tower up, 226 left, opening half from Woods Tower High School on this chilly January evening. Well, right now, hot for Warren Woods Tower. There's Moorefield with the ball, number 13. And I hear some body contact, a slap. They're going to get Herzig on the fouls. He draws his contact with Matt Pruitt. Each team with six fouls will shoot free throws the rest of the way. Well, on the next foul for each. Right. Kruger with the ball. Morefield. And a steal by Lubick. Lubick splits the double team. Hits the bucket. Lubick's been a spark plug here tonight for Warren Mott. And another skill, that's Jack Reek this time. Two on two. That's Yasso with a shot and a miss. Herzig with a rebound, put back, and another miss. Boy, he said he got hacked on the arm. He may have a, a point. He tripped up. That could have been dangerous there. Mike should go to the line. David Tower is going to host the tournament here, the district. It looks like the biggest challenger would be Notre Dame. Chance to win that ball game? No, Notre Dame's got a real rough. Does Tower have a chance? Rough time. Yeah, I think Tower has a chance. Real good chance. I do. They're playing really well. They feel good about themselves, and you can tell. Coming here with a lot of momentum, Bill. Ice with the basket. They're up 31 14. This is his second. That's Green with the defensive board. One and a half remaining. Opening half. 31-14. Woods Tower up. It's Lubick with the ball. Drives. Gets it to Green in the corner. On the money. another three. Boy, he just knew the second I left his hand it was good. Well, they're trying to creep back in this basketball game. 31-17. Oh, my. Almost a near steal by Green again. They throw it away. You may have to get maybe a lot of the starters back in this basketball game. For WW Tower, you're going to get one of them right now. Satorski, number 22. Full court pressure. Now they back out. Lubick on the right wing. 
Back up top, Ooh. Jack Green, boy, almost goes over and back. Another half size on his shoe, and it wasn't been. Great body Good. control. Pass inside to Herzig. That's Yasso with the ball now. Yasso gets the double team, and he's going to draw some contact. Number 23, Joe Amato. Chance, chance to go to the free throw line now, though. Billion cut it to 12. Huh. Free throws are real huge when you're down 14. Clock is stopped. Chance to get a couple points. Uh, missed, but a big offensive rebound by Herzen. Nice pass. Up top to Green. He might as well fire another. Oh, oh nice man. shot. All of a sudden, without even looking, Woods, Warren Mott is back in this ballgame, trailing 31 20, under 30 seconds to go. Boy, Mott needs to stand now. There's a travel right there. What are they going to call it? It is a travel. Now, Warmont needs to be very patient this time. Now, you get this down to nine, they're going to go on some huge momentum. And right now, the hot hand, though, belongs to this guy right here, number 11, Jack Green. Quarterback of the football team. I still look for him maybe to get it inside. Yeah, so on the way, he drills up top. Yeah, it's got a little to walk there. There's Green. On the left. Tower ball, good call. Fair glove off a little bit. They need to pull court pressure here and make Tower work their way up with the ball. They'll pick him up at half court. Five seconds. Got to fire it up at the horn. No good. That'll do it for the first half. You're watching TV Warren Sports. High school basketball, Joe Cochran and Bill Roos. Warren Mott gets back into this basketball game. Still down 11, though. We're going to have the dance team here at the half. They are very good, so uh, join them. Warren's coverage tonight of boys high school basketball. We're at Warren Woods Tower where the Titans lead the visiting Mott Marauders 31-20. Pretty impressive first half here, Joe, by the Titans. It was. that, But Mott has crept back into this game. As you mentioned off the air, a 6-0 run. Two gigantic threes there toward the end by Green, although he has three in the game. That has gave them some life. And I'll tell you what, he's out there now. And he really is a catalyst. 
Well, those nine points come off the bench for Jack Green. He's starting right now in this half. Let's see what kind of difference he can make. Mott trails by 11. He's back next year and probably at the quarterback as well. There's Weber looking at, uh, it's not Weber, that's Middleton. And it's a steal by Wood. Wood comes coast to coast. Oh, nice move. move around Middleton. Now Green's turn to go coast to coast, and he's going to get a charge. You know, I started to say, kick it back out, kick it back out. But he was going with it, and he wasn't going to listen to me anyway. And well, he's had a great game himself. Well, that's the biggest response we've got from the crowd tonight with that offensive charge. Kind of lit up the crowd now. Warren Mock could get off to a good start in the first couple minutes. Get it down to six or seven. There's travel. Good call. He was trapped. That's dicey on the travel. We haven't heard much of him tonight. Sister goes to St. Clement. Parents very involved. His dad is sitting directly across from us in the front row. I do see him with the tie. With the uh, dark tie. Or the tie and the charcoal gray suit. Yeah, right? suit. That's Middleton across the court to Yasso. Yasso thought about it. Firing that ball for the three-point. Gives it to Jack Green. And he's foul. Ooh, I thought he was outside. He looked like he was outside the line. And the assistant coach is going to tell him Spybrook, hey, he was outside the three-point range. Yeah, that's Dicey O. That's a foul. Green's going to go to the line now. That's Dicey O's second foul. To first this half. be interesting to see if it is two shots. Spybrook not saying anything much about it, and he gets the first one to fall. Well, I'll tell you what, Jack Green has single-handedly kept Mott alive tonight, Bill Roos. He's scored nearly 50% of Mott points. That's now 11 for Green as he rings up his own number. And it's a nine-point ball game now. Here comes Oh, oh, Dicey is lucky he doesn't get a third going over the back of the It could have been. The Torsky inbound. That's Moorfield with the ball. Back to Torsky, who drives baseline. Oh, nice wow. And that's Madison with the putback. That's the first bucket for the Titans in some time now. They lead 11. 33-22. Some great opportunities for Mott to get back in this basketball game. Curry's in Force side, up. forces it. That's Madison with the ball. Lubick on him. There's a mismatch. Oh. Just dribbles the ball off. His, well, at least a size match. Yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Jack Green with the ball. He stops and pops. He was all balance. Dicio with the defensive board. He immediately looks up. But his hand Otherwise, it gives the more field. He's had the high hand. Oh, oh a high glass for Donnie about Wood. High, high glass. That was sweet. Donnie Wood's got a nice move. Woods Tower 35 by 22. Under six and a half to go, third quarter. You're watching TV Warren's coverage of boys high school basketball. They need another Jack Green three. Lubick is going to get hacked by number 13. That's Justin Morphy. That's his second foul. Feet second of his half. He's on the floor. Bons going to foul. That's Jack Green. Grabowski going to check back in for the Titans, and he's been in trouble for uh, Mott here tonight. Lubick to Yasso. Yasso now drives, penetrates, gets it blocked by Madison. And a oh, steal sure. by Yasso, and a foot in. Huge bucket for Mott. They trail by 11 again, 35.4, and we're going to get a whistle. Travel. And a travel on the Titans. I think we're going to get a timeout here, possibly by Warmwood's Tower. It is. Bob Jollett wants a 30-second timeout. That's kind of disheartening right now if you're Woods Tower that you're a minute and a half basically into this third quarter and you need to call a timeout. 
Just tells me they didn't get the thing settled at halftime that they needed to get settled. Well, again, the chance to get it into single digits. And I think Bob Jolla just thought maybe the play was a little scrappy out there, and he wants to talk things over. Right now, Warmont's got to feel good about themselves. Again, still uh, T.J. Weber on the bench. Well, and that's fine. That, that, you know, Weber's could be on the bench right now. Bob, you've got to be happy that other guys are contributing right now in this half, other than Jack Green. Uh, Lugan's done a nice job. And, and Yasso already in the backcourt in this court. Lubick with the ball. Moreland on him. Jack Green out of the game, Bill. So yeah, Hill, Hillman's in his place. That's Dicio with the steal to Donnie Wood. That's yeah. a big turnover. There's Madison with the fake. Kicks it back out. Donnie Wood Travel. drives. And he's going to get a three second call on somebody down low in white. I thought he called the travel up top. Maybe not. Yeah, Mike Peltz is up top calling the three second. Now Green comes back in. Yasso checks out for a breather. A little H2O. Well deserved for him. Here comes, said Jack Green. Across the timeline. There's Hillman gets double teamed immediately. Well, he is swarmed under. No help at all, and all of a sudden we get a steal and we're going the other way. It's Donnie Wood with a finger roll. Offensive board by Dicio. Boy, Dicio came all the way down to get that follow-up. Good hustle. And he'll go to the free throw line. He earned these free throws. Second foul on Steve Herzig. Also, Mott's second foul was half. Both teams are tied at two in that category. Dicio makes his first. Gives the Titans a 36-24 advantage. Just under five to go, third quarter. Lines up his second offering. Off the front of the iron, rolls and drops. 37-24. What's Tower? Here we go with the full court press again. Near walk. Double team on Hillman. We find Herzog across the timeline. He penetrates, stops and pops, misses. Foul. And now he's going to get a, yep, a third foul on him right away. And now you have to be concerned if you're hot that your big fella has just picked up his third with 4.43 left third quarter. Now we're going to get some action off the bench for Mott. As Ali's going to come in, Weber's going to come in. I think what you're going to try to get here, where Spybrook's going to try to go with this, is he's looking for some outside presence from Ali and maybe Weber to go inside and penetrate. He also can hit the jump shot, but I think that's what they're looking for, these two guys, and they're expecting some off defense from them. Right now, it is crunch time for Warren Mott. Hillman's the other Marauder who checks out. That's Moorefield, a hard shot off the iron. Good call. Goes out of bounds, and it's Marauder ball. Weber handling the pressure of the full court. Lubick takes it across the timeline in the corner right away to Jack Green who fires up a shot and a miss. Kowalski rebound and we're going the other way. Here's Moorefield. Dicefield looks down low. Oh, nice move by Madison. Gets his own board. Well, Weber thought he had all ball. Check that uh, Middleton. Middleton. And we're going to get a middle tip foul. Timeout Warren Mott. Hope you'll continue to watch TV Warren News. 6, 9, noon, 4, 7, and 10, 30. And uh, that is hosted by Fred Merle and Lori Erla. Sports by Rick Chapsky. Sports line every Monday night. At 7.30 live, as we look at Bob Jollett. Bob Jollett's been a co-host on there right now. Chris Shunk and I host that show. Bob Jollett's been uh, very involved here at Warren Witch Tower, and he's been very involved in TV Warren. He's even helped call some games here. We did the girls' basketball tournament from here, and he did a couple games with me. 
But right now, he's got to feel really happy about his team. But it, since about the first quarter and a half, it's been a little bit scrappy play, and Warmont's been able to hang around. A little well, scrappy play is certainly the offensive contributions of Jack Green. Yeah, that's kept him alive. You take even half those points away, and it's a blowout. Right now, this last four minutes of third quarter, Warmont's got to get this under 10 points. Well, right now, too, if you're, if you're the Titans, you've got to feel happy of the defensive job you've done inside the paint. They've packed it in and really limited the Marauders' opportunities down low. And I think for the time being, they're happy of just giving up the points to Jack Green from the outside. But that could change certainly here in the, in the final 12 minutes, six seconds of this ball game. And you have Madison at the line, but you mentioned it. What a great move he had inside. He can, the tenacity, he adds a lot to this ball club that they've needed in years past, rebounding, and he brings it here. This is his first shot. Makes the second. 406 left. That's a 14 point Woods Tower advantage. 38 24. Full court pressure again. That's Lubick with the ball. Gets hounded immediately as he crosses the timeline. Big forced mistake right there as the ball goes off of Jack Green. All that half court pressure causing some trouble for the Marauders. Grabowski with the ball to Madison. One step. Oh, man. Now it's a three and a one opportunity, or two and a one. That may be too much for Warmont to come back now. First and one situation we see tonight. Herzig checks back in with three fouls now. We'll see how cautiously he has to play in the low post. Stuart Mayer checks in for Woods Tower as well. Madison misses his and one opportunity. It's 40-24 with Tower in the lead. Here comes Lubick. Big possession right now for Bach. With Donnie Wood on Lubick. Jack Green mishandles the ball, regains possession quickly. Back to Lubick now, low on the right wing. Spurzaga up top. Green now finds himself on the right wing. Ball tipped by Madison off the re off the backboard, right back into the hands of Mr. Madison. Well, he's had a heck of a third quarter. Got to steal with the ball. No, no hurry here to pick up points right now. If you're Woods Tower, they're just doing a nice job of whipping the ball around the perimeter. They'll take an easy bucket to get it, but that's the second offensive charge we've seen already in this half. Mm -hmm. Players set himself well. Good call. That's the third foul on Dice. You'll, you'll probably come out of the game. You'll probably get Winston now. Yep. Mr. Winston checks in. That's Darren Winston, senior, six foot four. Bob does a great job. Bob Jolly goes over and talks to Dice. comes up but with a smile and a yep. pat on the back, explaining what he may have done wrong. Bob Jolly is just great with these kids. But I think because I think Mr. Dicio understood what he had done wrong as well. I want to thank Jan Sander, the fine AD here at Warren Woods Tower. Whatever we ask for, she takes care of it. She sets us up again. The entire staff, Jan Sander, Bob Jollett, thank you so much for having us at Warren Woods Tower. Spread the floor again. Does Woods Tower, Donnie Wood up top. Grabowski with the ball, now low, tipped away by Herzig. And it'll stay in possession of the Titans. 2.40 remaining, third quarter. It seems that the Titans have regained control once again here in this ballgame. They're up 16. That's right, the biggest, they equal their biggest lead of the ballgame. They were up 31-14 at one point in the first half. Sorry about that, that's 17. Jack Green's got everybody beat. And Jack Green makes it look easy. That's 20, 40 to 26. And Jack Green has 13. That's 50%. Off the bench, not bad at all. Not bad, and then they throw it away. Now, Warmont, if they can take advantage of this, get it to 10 or under with 212 to go in third quarter, there's still time here. But right now, they're still frustrated with this tower defense especially this court, full court pressure. I think they can just look at that last offensive possession for Woods Tower and say, we can still get back in this game. They got really sloppy on the offense that time. TJ going all the way. Outside the Lubick. Uh, he drives from the wing. Oh, nice move. 
Lubeck with six. Full court pressure, Bill. Offset, it's a 12 point deficit. That's Madison. He makes it look simple, getting past Mr. Weber. 42 28, 140 remaining. He has nine now to lead tower. Weber in the corner. Drives, gets it batted away, away by Madison. Madison. Nice job. Green lines up a three and Madison. throws another. That's what, his fourth Green. point, Joe? That's his fourth, and he's got 16 points. Jack Green is simply on fire. 11 point deficit right now for Bob. This is a huge defensive stand here. Donnie Green fires it in the corner. Oh boy, big steal by Ali. Grabowski's pass inside wasn't hard enough. He, Ali picks off a pass. They need to slow it down now. Look for a good shot. Look for Jack Green. Hers it inside. It's too hard. And a rebound by Madison again. We called his name quite a few times Throw in the last few minutes. Boy, more months had a pretty nice press here in the third quarter. Zatorski checks in for Woods Tower. You know, Jack Green looks like he is really winded now. He has ran the floor here. He's played some great defense. We'll see if they try to set him up for a three. Boy, look at him go. go. Nice idea. Just need to finish. It's Donnie Wood now. Come on. Pass for Zig up top. Zatorski misses. There's Madison with all. Oh, Madison board. has just been on a mission here yep. tonight. Great job on the offensive glass, particularly this final eight minutes, or the last eight minutes of this game. Free throw is good. Madison has taken over here in the third quarter. That puts him in double digits now with 10. But he's been great on the defensive end with the rebounding. Got some blocked shots. Splits the free throws, though. You get it to 10 or under. Oh, he loses the handle on that ball. Donnie Wood comes down with the rebound. I think he was thinking dunk. Power to hold for the last shot. Madison with Weber on him. He dances around him. What a oh. move. Now that came after T.J. Weber got his hand on the ball. Madison yep. able to control it and put the shot down. Well, you can see Weber hanging his head after that final bucket of this quarter. 45-31. Wood that Tower seemingly once again gaining control here. In the final minute of this, this quarter. A four-point turnaround. Looked like Weber was going in for the easy two. Lost the handle, and then Madison gets it at the opposite end. And how often do you see that happen? Quite a bit, actually. Well, Bill Roos, hometown window and siding is sponsoring our player of the game. Located in St. Clair Shores, 777-2800. Dave Giapallo. He'll also put in $50 to the athletic department of the winning player. And right now it looks like it may be warm with Tower, although the game is not over yet. And, and, and actually, let's let's hypothetically look at the situation, Joe. If, if this game were to end right now, what, you, is it a team ball? There are so many kids that have not contributed so well for this tight ball club right now. I certainly know if I were to win this ball game, had the, the lead, who it would go to? Donnie Woods, or not it's Jack, Jack Green. Jack, Jack Green, number 11. Well, how about Madison? Oh, he's at a heck of a basketball, let's, he's took let's, over. Yeah. Let's see how well he does here in this final quarter because Madison really came on here in that last last quarter. i got to thank my other sponsor right now. We're not doing truck games, but Gary from Velocino, 755-6300. Located at 10 Mile and Hoover. I want to thank Gary for all his sponsorship throughout the year, including Sportsline. Velocino's 10 Mile and Hoover, 755-6300. Oh, nice move inside by Madison. He wants that game ball. Weber's going to try to take this game over. He's fouled. Now there's a lot of contact there by T.J. Weber and Madison. They're going to push the on Madison. I also want to thank Bob's Discount Muffler, sponsorship of Sportsline. We appreciate what all Bob Castle does, located also at the 10-mile area, 10-mile mile. 
Madison gets his second foul. It's only Wood Tyler's fourth foul this half. That's Tillman lining up a two. Oh, a rattled out. And out. Madison with another rebound. Moorfield with the ball. Well, the, right out of Madison's hand, Dolly threw it away. Weber lines up a three off the back of the iron. Madison again cleaning off the defensive glass for Woods Tower. You can certainly can see how tired Bond looks right now, especially in their shot selection. Well, I want to give Warren Woods Tower some credit on defense. Weber, three points. Hillman, zero. That's their two scoring leaders. They only get three points. That's serious trouble. Well, remember we talked about this earlier in the ball game. The third-rated defensive team in the entire pack. We're talking 35 ball clubs in the home area conference, and then the third best defensive team in terms of points allowed per ball game. That's Donnie Wood picking up a couple. I think himself. I think that's what makes them dangerous, Bill, for the tournament. Is they play great defense. Oh, right back at you, Mr. Lubick picking up a bucket. Woods Tower up 47-33. Under 6 and 20 to go. Final quarter of this ball. Now he wouldn't think about it. Or giving it back up to Moorfield. He spreads it over to Javoski. He lines up a three and misses. It's Donnie Wood with the long offensive rebound. Now looks like they're just going to spread it out. Go four quarters here. Why not? Donnie Wood inside. Boy, I'll tell you what, all that defensive rebound, this kid is all of a sudden not to play, particularly here in the second half. The thing that really impressed me about the defense, though, by Woods Tower is the handle. The constant hands in the passing lane, knocking stuff away, creating turnovers, forcing mistakes throughout this ball game on the offense, so that's for my. And Bill, to put an explanation point on that, that's good coaching. Bob Jaw is a teacher of this game, loves the kids, doing a great job. This system is really working right now. That great force of the pass is side of her, That's just not the Weber to Luda. To Middleton, to Weber. Weber misses, ball bumping around. Better on his feet, he answers. You know, we always talk about the big body, especially the Kentucky League standing. The Warren Woods Tower fans on the other side, and I know we got a shot of them early, have stood in the entire fourth quarter. They've been pretty good here tonight. Well, the announcer said two shots, but it's only going to be one. The walk it counted. 47-35. 12-point ball game right now. Woods Tower up with 5.23 left. Weber Kansas free throw opportunity makes it an 11-point ball game. They need turnovers immediately. Still have a shot here. There's full court press broke, broken easily. The next foul on Mott will send Tower to the free throw line the rest of this ball game. Pass it down low to Tyson. Oh, we're going to get a foul. We're going to get Weber. body on him. Yeah. I thought they might call the travel. Glad he picked up his foot. But the foul came first. That's Weber's second foul. Nice looking shot. Yep. That's six for Dicio. <laughs> nice smooth release on the free throws by Dicio. And they go up 13. 49, 36. They need help. Run out of time. There's the hand moving again. It was Dice Hill this time had to pass away from Jack Green. Great point, Bill. The defense, the hand, 
And then on the offensive end, the ball movement is just wonderful here for the Titans. They still looking for some help. Gets triple teams down low. Lock of contact, no call. Lubick with the ball after getting the pass from Herzig. But it doesn't seem exceedingly like there's enough time to be throwing the ball around the perimeter here. But he's again, it goes to that defense. They're not giving them any openings at all. Green wants it. He's open outside. There's Weber. Can't miss any shot off the iron. Oh, what a job by Pedalark Lemon. That was great dribbling, eh? Justin Moorfield keeping that ball alive for Woods Tower. Lebowski for inbound. On the far side, that's Herzig number 30 defending him. Fish with the ball to Dicea. Hey, Moorfield's really impressed me too in terms of running the offense. Yes, he has. Really, real calm character here. Sister's playing at uh, U of M uh, um, Dearborn, I believe. Pretty good athlete here. I believe she plays some volleyball. Middleton gets his third foul at team's eighth. More field going to the line. Shooting one and one. Or is it two? I think it's two. Kansas first. It is now. Doesn't matter anyway. 14 point ball game. Woods Tower 50, not 36. Ball rims in and out. That's Middleton with the rebound. Look at the Madison. 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 That was to get it back. They almost got to take threes now. Oh, Madison. There's your player of the game. Yeah, I think so, Joe. I know Bruce. He deserves it. Another steal. Peach with the steal. Krabowski up top of the steal. Now we're going to go corners again. <laughs> Madison thinks about pumping the three. I think Bob Zeller was saying, no, no, no. Got this run clock. Under three minutes to go. As it does go baseline, draws contact underneath. They're going to get the foul on Lubitsch. Sixteen point ball here. That's a Lubick's second foul. Team ninth. Middleton, Madison short on that one. Ali checks in for Mott. Well, I'm ball. sorry, Kaczynski and Zatorski both check in for Woods Tower. So you concur, uh, Madison, player of the game? What? Somebody asked me to pick before, and that was one guy that came to mind. Yeah, he, uh, he's had a he's great had a season. Heck of a second half. Certainly, when Mott looked like they could come back in this ball game, I thought it was Madison who really put the dagger in the burn and goal. Troy Allen Madison, player of the game. Another skill. That's a Zatorski this time. Here he goes. He's our hometown hero. No hurry now, down to 220. We will see CC at De La Salle next Tuesday, next Friday. We're here for the...